<laughs> Maybe well, first easy question. So can you just introduce yourself? Tell me what you're doing here. Hi, I'm Jose Enrique Padu, the producer, writer, producer, and director of Cube American, a feature-length documentary. And I am here because Jorge Enrique Gonzalez Pacheco asked me to bring it. I knew he was doing a, a Cuban-themed festival this year. And um, he's actually friends with uh, Mito Tojito and Andy Garcia, both of them were in my film. And they said, you got to help them out. And I'm like, I'm there. So here I am. Uh, that's why I'm here. Great. Okay. And um, I know we were talking about this a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. about um, this is your first feature-length mm -hmm. documentary. And I, like, am also, like, I wanted to go into documentary films, and, like, I know there's, like, a challenge with, like, getting funding and stuff like that. Oh. So, like, as a filmmaker, were there any struggles for getting, like, tell me about, like, how does the funding go? Well, f funding, funding is, a, is a proverbial struggle no matter what, okay? Because people, um, what we did was, well, I started out with, with some of my own funds. You know, I, the first stuff I shot, I shot it on my own dime. And then I cut a 10-minute teaser out of some of the stuff I had shot. And then I used that teaser to go to the International Documentary Association, the IDA. And then I went through a process where the IDA became a sponsor for our film. And then that allowed me to get contributions from folks that would then become tax deductions for them. So, because I couldn't promise them a return on their investment, like, you know, a lot of theatrical films do, I promised them an immediate tax deduction on it. So if somebody gave me $1,000, they were able to write off, since it went to the IDA, and then they would earmark those funds for me. The IDA took an administrative fee, small percentage, and the rest came back to the film. So I was largely able to, to raise the funds by promising people tax deductions, and knocking on a lot of doors, you know, knocking on uh, and Cuban Americans' doors and, and non Cuban Americans' doors, people who I thought might have an affinity for the story we were trying to tell, you know. But it's not easy and uh, it takes a lot of persistence. It's not a natural thing for a filmmaker to do if you're in a creative type, it's more a business skill. But it's a skill that we need to learn as filmmakers because otherwise you can't get your film done. You know? It's hard, it's tough. Yeah. But um, also about the storytelling. Okay, the storytelling aspect of yeah. documentaries, because I know at least when I went to school, like a lot of the the way that they taught documentaries is like it's a narrative. You know, you usually follow like one character, but it, you're following like so many different characters. Yeah. I mean, I bet like how how did you? That's a great question. When I when I started doing the film, I, I you know I'm in Los, I live in Los Angeles, and of course in Los Angeles there's a ton of creative people, and everybody's got an opinion, right? So I started talking to people about my film, and they said, oh, this USC film school grad, I'll remember it. Well, that's why I'm telling you the story. He said, oh, no, you have to write a screenplay for that. You can't just go into a documentary without writing a screenplay. You've got to write a screenplay. I said, a screenplay, really? I was like, I got questions, I got themes, but a screenplay? Goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to write a screenplay. If you write a screenplay, it's not going to work out. And I ignored him, you know? And, uh, and I feel truly that a documentary is made in the editing room. I mean, the, the most difficult hurdle we had to face was editing this film, which took over a year and a half. You know, it, it, editing is where documentaries come to, come to pass. I mean, you have to get coverage, obviously. You gotta ask the right questions. You, like everything else, you know, you, ha you have to get B-roll, you got to get coverage, you got to shoot things from different angles and so on, so that you can create variety in your visual aspect. But you have a certain number of questions, you ask people those questions, and you research the people a lot ahead of time, and you create the story in the editing room, which is what we did. So I did not have a screenplay for this film, and if I'm lucky enough to do another one, I probably won't have a screenplay for that one either. You know, so. Good for you. Yeah. I think that's great. Um, and... We were talking also before about what do you think about the Latino film community? Yes. Yeah. I know that you had mentioned that, that. I mean, the Latino film community could stand to get stronger, and, you know, I think it is getting stronger. You know, um, I th but what I had mentioned to you before was that I don't perceive filmmakers as being Latino, Anglo. African American, Asian American, I don't perceive, that's just who you are as a person, that's your, but you're a filmmaker, you're a filmmaker, and you tell the story you want to tell, 
and you shouldn't be constrained in any way by saying, oh, you know, this guy's a Latino, so he should only be telling Latino stories. There's no credibility if he tells an Anglo story if he's a Latino, and vice versa. I mean, a lot of Anglo directors have made films about Latinos, right? I mean, what, how do they get that right to do it? And we can't do the opposite? Of course we can. We should be able to. And, you know, but, you know, we have to support each other. As, you know, as, as, a, as a Latino community of filmmakers, we have to support each other because that's where we're going to get our strength. Um, and sometimes we do and sometimes we don't. Sometimes we're our own worst enemies, you know. But, um, but I don't, I hate the categorization of, of filmmakers as a Latino filmmaker, Asian American filmmaker, African American filmmaker. I don't like that. I, I like it. I'm a filmmaker. That's it. You know. Okay. Okay, so quick questions. So I was wondering what's the first movie you remember watching? Ooh. Probably an Elvis Presley movie? No, I take it back. The Music Man with Robert Preston. That shows my age. My mom took me. We used to, have, we used to go to this little theater in Union City, New Jersey. You saw a lot of. She, my mom was a big fan of Elvis Presley, so I went to a lot of Blue Hawaii and you know Viva Las Vegas and all that. Those are, I remember Hatari with John Wayne. I remember The Music Man with Robert Preston, Shirley Jones. What else? I don't know. I mean, those are some of them I remember. And it, it was. She used to like musicals. You know, my mom used to like musicals. So and happy things because, of course, she didn't want to go see tragedy. She'd already lived her tragedy. Yeah, and she wanted to see happy things. And Elvis was a good, happy guy, right? <laughs> it was always, he always got the girl in the end, and he sang, and it was cool, and he was good looking. You know, so it was all good. That's, yeah, that's what I remember. First yeah. video, that's yeah. first movie, that's great. Okay, um, and who was your favorite director? And why? Oh, gosh, that's a tough question. I mean, I have so, I mean. Pick a few, yeah. Okay, uh, Woody Allen, Scorsese, I'm a little odd. Um, Truffaut, um, what else? Uh, Spielberg, I mean, I go on. You can go on my Facebook. <laughs> I just need to go on Facebook. There's, there, you know, I can't do credit, the, the, the directors. I mean, there's so many incredible directors that, you know, do really hard work. I mean, making a movie, a movie. As I found out, as any people will find, anybody that tries to make a movie deserves credit, no matter how, you know, the critics may pan it or not. The fact that they are put themselves, immerse themselves there, work with actors or work with documentaries, and make them make a movie, is is a testament to their fortitude and their spirit. I mean, it, it, there's no bad filmmaker out there. There's the bad filmmaker is the one that doesn't doesn't try to do it. That's the guy's. That's the bad. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but are there, are there any? directors that have inspired you, like inspire your work as, as a documentarian? Do well, I, as a documentarian, yes. Werner Herzog is a big fan. I'm a big fan of Alex Gibney, too. Lucy Walker, I like. I mean, those are people that, you know, Errol Morris, you know, I mean, those are people that I've looked at. But I think I would say if I had to pick one, I'd say Werner Herzog. I think Herzog is an incredible documentarian. He's just, just I don't know, he, his topics, the way he approaches stuff, I mean, He's just great, and he's also a good uh, theatrical, I mean, narrative filmmaker as well. He made a lot of narrative films before. Recently, he's spent more time on documentaries, but he's made a lot of, so yeah, Werner Herzog is probably my... One more thing. Um, yeah. if you have, do you have any... Um... Can you take a half step to your right? Sure. You're starting to move to center, right? Sorry. It's Cuban. <laughs> we don't want that. It's the Cuban of me. Okay. Do you have any, um, not recommendations, but like... Um, for like younger filmmakers, like, like any, like not Latino filmmakers, but any young. Yeah, I, I think for a young filmmaker. Uh, let's wait till this yeah, yeah, that's true. I think I think a young filmmaker. Here comes another one. Though. Uh, I don't know if that was electric. That uh, was electric. One. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even hear it coming. Uh, um, I think for a young filmmaker, the important thing is not to be scared of failure. You know, not to think that what they have to put out is perf has to be perfect. Nothing ever gets perfect. I mean, no film, even, you know, $100 million films, they get perfect because they have $50 million to put into post-production, you know. No film for a documentarian is going to be perfect. There's going to be pops in the sound, they're going to, the camera's going to move, there's going to, but it's about telling a compelling story. So what you need to do is you need to find a subject that's compelling. You need to, see, you need to find a subject that moves people, where people are going to come out changed in some ways and you got to work on that subject you know and if you get it wrong the first time you keep trying so it's really about the passion for the work and the never say die attitude 
because that's the attitude you have to have. You, you, get, you get knocked down, you get back up. You get knocked down, you get back up, eventually it happens. If you don't have the will and the fortitude to do it, it's not for the faint of heart. This isn't gonna happen, you know, it doesn't come to you. You gotta go find it, you know, that's my advice. That's great yeah. advice. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks, thank you. Get your... Okay. <laughs> yeah. That was excellent, dude. Yeah. Thank you, appreciate thank you. it. Thanks. That was great advice for all of us. <laughs>